be listening to music. I don't know how much I'll be speaking, but uh, Christy will be here to answer all your questions. And uh, let's start. The background, you may hear my girls once in a while, just so you know. This is the reality of COVID going on. So for those who don't know me, my name is David Levy. Uh, I'm one of the founders of Expedition Out. And uh, We've been uh, working all together with the guys, with Manny, Chrissy, Aaron, Terrell, all those guys, and we're trying to really uh, make a difference using art. And basically our hope is kind of try to use our art in order to raise funds, you know, or just simply raise awareness, you know, uh, for people using the skills that we develop through the movie industry or animation industry and try to be more useful than just an entertainer. And you know, some people may say, well, yeah, but that's not your job. Just do what you're supposed to, just be an artist and that's it. But in many ways, I, I strongly disagree with this. I think, uh, I think as artists, we have, a, we have a duty, you know? And the duty is not to just entertain people. Our duty is also to raise awareness. And if there's something we love, you know, like, and that's the thing that we have in common with all the guys is that we really love uh, nature, you know? And very often, when artists are brought to nature brought to art, I would say, because of nature, because of nature inspiring us. So there is a question that came in. What is uh, your favorite thing about drawing wildlife? Uh, personally, for me, it's capturing the individual beauty. So I would say that what I find fascinating is that when actually painting wildlife helps us as human to position ourselves, uh, uh, to position ourselves in, in nature. You know, uh, nature is really, uh, we are part of nature, you know, and by being interested at seeing how animals live, you know, how, how they understand life, how, uh, uh, well, if you want to see layers, here you go, I can put the layers here. I can show the brushes, here we go. It may hide a little bit of the painting, uh, but uh, since that's a question that's being asked, you know, you, hopefully you guys will see. Uh, I don't want to hide too much of the painting, though. Let's see if I can change this. Okay, tell me if that's better, guys. Here we go. Layers and brushes. Hopefully that'll help a little bit. But in general, I mean, when I do live paintings like that, I tend to use a very simple round brush, you know, uh, as you see here. Uh, the reason why I duplicated the screen is that so I don't uh, make you guys sick by uh, zooming in and out of the image. Oh, that my layers here, it's a little hard to understand what I'm doing. Here we go.
And uh, yeah, very often on this type of images, I would just use a simple round brush, you know, nothing fancy. Uh, what I like about the round brush is the fact that uh, the one that I have set up, which is this, you know, here, you know, can go thin and thick, thin and thick. So you can very easily actually imitate depth, you know, uh, on a creature. And, uh, you know, you can really easily modify things, you know, using that technique. Uh, it's, it's exactly like a paintbrush, you know. A lot of people may use a brush with the shape dynamics that are the same, you know, uh, the same all along, but I find it very limiting. I much prefer having sm small precision and large precision and larger um, into one into one brush, which allows me to really be more flexible. So how I duplicate the image is that uh, if you go to Arrange and uh, New Window, it's in Photoshop, it's like, I think it's Image, or is it uh, Window, Arrange, New Window. That's how it works. It's very useful, especially for all those demos and all this stuff is very, very useful. It's nice because uh, you don't have to suffer me zooming in and out of the image constantly, which is something I do all the time, you know. So yeah, what I was saying earlier on is that I think that being interested by wildlife teaches us about the positive things and negative things about us humans, you know. Uh, there's a lot of, there's a lot definitely, I mean, especially when we talk about wildlife, I mean, there's a lot of things that need to be better in this world, you know, no one can discuss that, you know. And uh, the only way to be able to do that is really to, to understand wildlife, you know. And the thing is that, this is a very, I mean, we are all connected. I know it sounds very, very much like what a lot of people would say, you know, but it's true, you know, we are all connected, you know, all living animals are connected. And uh, what hurts animals will hurt us at some point, you know, uh, and, and we're seeing it with nature, we're seeing it with everything, you know, whether it's uh, pollution or uh, destruction of our environment, you know, uh, there's a lot of uh, connections that happen and we don't even know about them because they're so finite and so small and, but they affect us in massive ways, you know? A little bit like a butterfly effect, you know? You, if you, well, if you, the wing of a butterfly can create a, a storm, you know, they say. Well, it's the same thing here, you know? The, what you may not know uh, directly may affect you anyway, you know, you may do something and it will affect you. So I think it's that interconnection that to me is very powerful, you know. Okay. So I created, created a layer for this, you know, I created a layer for the ocean. Well, that's the thing, it seems that I cannot do that. Uh, the only thing I can do is flip towards me, you know, so uh, so it doesn't look like it's possible. If someone knows how it's possible, and if I can, if I can uh, switch the, the screen to something horizontal, uh, the only thing that I've found is that if I go, uh, if I double tap, it will put me into a, a portrait mode, which is not what I want to do, you know, of course. And just so you know, I am using some references you know, for this. I'm using, uh, I pull up a bunch of photos, I'm using references. Uh, I think references is fine. Uh, I'm still gonna compose my own image, you know. Of course. I'm gonna add the kind of stuff that I like, you know, which is uh, maybe something sci-fi-ish into here. 
So what do I love about the ocean? So I love everything about the ocean. I grew up, uh, I grew up uh, by the ocean, by the by the sea, by the Mediterranean Sea in, in South France. And for me, it was uh, really an important thing growing up because uh, I knew nothing about the ocean until my dad decided that we were going to learn how to sail, you know? And, uh, and I was, as a kid, I was a very, very anxious kid. You know, to be honest, I'm still a pretty anxious adult. You know? uh, but uh, the thing is that when I was a kid, I was extremely anxious. You know, I had really strong bouts of anxiety, and the only two, the only thing at the time that was helping me was art. You know, I was drawing a lot, and was helping me deal with my anxieties. You know, and uh, when my dad, uh, uh, I love you too, Manny, and uh, when my dad uh, took us sailing, you know, uh, it really changed my life entirely when it comes to anxieties. Uh, it really helped me be more confident, you know. I went snorkeling and I will never forget uh, the first time I snorkeled. I was terrified by seeing the transparency of the water, you know, because the transparency of the water allowed me to see so far underwater and you have the feeling that anything can jump at you, you know, like a shark, like, like, uh, like some creature underwater. And I think what happened is that as a kid, I just had a lot of imagination, you know, and that imagination created like a, a little bit of a panic, you know, at times. And when I was underwater snorkeling, I was terrified of what could come out of there. And that pushed me in some ways to be less sensitive, you know. Uh, and by uh, uh, started uh, uh, doing uh, uh, free diving, you know, started uh, uh, sailing, you know, being on water, being in storms. We, we crossed, uh, we crossed, uh, uh, the, uh, the Mediterranean Sea, we went to Corsica, we went to Sicily, and it was a small boat. It, wasn't, it was really not a big boat, you know? But even though it was a small boat, you know, the experience that you get, and that's the thing that's great in France, is that sailing in France is not necessarily a sport for very rich people, you know? Uh, uh, you can get a fairly decent boat, you know, like a 28-feet boat, you know, for, for a certain amount of money, that's not too bad, you know? You're not gonna entirely break your bank and stuff like that. But at the same time, you know, I think that this experience as a kid entirely modeled me as an adult. It really helped me build self-confidence. It helped me just, just uh, be more in the moment, you know, as opposed to be always afraid of everything. And I think to me, it was a massive psychological breakthrough uh, to be able to feel like, wow, I can go underwater, I can see, I can see turtles, I can see sharks, I can see whales. And as a kid, and even as an adult, you know, I can tell you one thing. As a kid, when I saw a whale for the first time, you know, we're on the boat and the whale was massive and like maybe, I don't know, 100 feet close to our boat, it is something that is so fantastic that I think every human on the planet should have that experience one. And you know, since then, I haven't sailed a lot, you know, I mean, I have sailed a lot, but I haven't sailed a lot with my dad. My dad passed away, and you know, when my dad passed away, I realized that my dad was a little bit like me, you know, he was a workaholic, and I wouldn't see him much, you know, and I realized that the one thing that we had in common, that, that kept us in common, is the ocean. So the ocean not, not only has like a, had an influence on me in terms of like how, incredible it is or how how beautiful and how powerful the ocean is and how dangerous it is as well but also it had a very intimate connection between me and my dad and i think as i grew up you know uh, and i instead of sailing i started windsurfing which is sailing as well you know i started windsurfing and i i did more extreme sports and and snowboarding and things like that but all these sports what they have in common is that they are intimately linked with nature and if you ask most snowboarders, you know, or most windsurfers, usually they are pretty freaking strong advocates about nature and uh, how we should keep it sane and healthy and things like that. You know, so I think it says a lot about if you are into those kind of sports, you know, or if you're interested in, it's something that feeds itself. You know, whether 
you snowboard or whether you just go and paint in the nature. And to me, there's something that's extremely related to each other. You know, and if you look at documentaries, you know, like, I know Patagonia has excellent documentaries, you know, and uh, uh, I strongly recommend for you guys to look at those documentaries. Uh, they, there is a connection between us and nature that is indisputable because we are nature. As much as a whale or a dolphin or anything, we're all part of the same realm, you know? It's not like we're aliens and coming from another planet. It's part of us and nature, and we are part of nature, you know? So I think it's the oneness of it that really inspires me, you know? The fact that it's, it's, it's all of us, you know? Anyway, I'm starting to ramble a little bit, but uh, <laughs> when painting, it's a little hard sometimes to talk and, and paint, but... Uh, and these are things that, you know, I was very, very lucky to work on, uh, on the, the Avatar sequel that's coming. And that's the kind of messages that I really admire uh, James Cameron for, because that's the kind of messages that he really, he tries to own in, uh, uh, into his movies, you know. Uh, using that media, using movies as a way to express, uh, uh, express, uh, uh, the feeling that we have about wanting to protect nature and things like that, I think it's it's amazing, you know, to be able to do that, to be able to be like an amazing director and be able to to talk about that, I think is very powerful, you know, and it's a, once again, as an artist, maybe it's, it's more, it's a du duty, you know. Sorry guys, it's a little bit difficult to talk and paint at the same time, you know, but uh, trying to do my best. So I'm gonna change brush just uh, for fun a little bit. I'm gonna use a, a cloud brush. The cloud brush kind of looks like this, you know? That is a whale shark, whoever. It's still in the early stage, you know, so it may not be very easy to notice, you know? Uh, the fin is a little too small. There's a bunch of issues still that I have to resolve. It's, it is a whale shark. Of course, what makes a whale shark a whale shark is going to be the, the pattern on his skin, you know. And uh, so I was mentioning uh, uh, the movies I worked on and things like that. And what's amazing is that if you have the chance to work on a, on a story, you know, that can push the narrative of trying to save animals and conservation and things like that, I think it's, it's really an, an extra, really a, luck, a chance, you know, as an artist. It doesn't happen a lot, but when it happens, I feel like it's, I, f I feel very lucky that I've had that possibility. So what's really defining for whale shark is, of course, uh, also another, aside from the pattern, you know, is those ridges, you know, the cartilage, cartilage ridges, you know, that are really cool looking. But yeah, so I would say that growing up as a kid by the ocean, I mean, it's it's. Like I said, you become part of it, you know, and you want to be part of it. I remember as a kid, you know, the first time I saw dolphins as well, I swear, 
I couldn't sleep for two nights. You know, I was so excited, you know. And there's other details, you know, when you're on a boat at night, you know, on a, very t on a tiny boat, you know, and you're in the middle of, of, of the Mediterranean, you know, and it's, it's scary as a kid uh, because there is danger associated with it. Uh, you really start thinking in bigger terms, you know, the stars at night when you're at sea <coughs> are just incredible. You know, you can see the stars perfectly. And I mean, granted, you can do that anywhere, you know, if you go to the desert, you know, if you go camping in the in Yosemite or if you go camping uh, in a natural place, you know, because there's no light pollution, you can see at night very, and, but I think that these kind of moments as a kid will mark you forever, forever. And not only it will mark you in terms of, as an artist, you know, but the style of the work you will do, even when I do sci-fi stuff, you know, when I do sci-fi stuff, you know, whether, I mean, not too long ago, there was a, uh, the producer on uh, Avatar released a, a design uh, that I was part of uh, the team that worked on it. It, it. It's a submarine design, you know, and it was really fun to design because basically, I mean, James Cameron came to us and said, well, we need a submarine that basically looks exactly like like a crab, you know? So you can go on uh, online and you can see if you look for the crab submarine uh, uh, for Avatar, you know, you will see that design and uh, that was an awesome design. And once again, that relates directly to what you can do if you are inspired by nature and you you can still do sci-fi and whatever you do in sci-fi is still gonna be hugely inspired by nature, you know? So. So I'm going to start adding some patterns in there because I'm really excited about this. I'm going to save this. I'm going to use another brush. So this one is more of a is more of a dry brush like that. And it's going to help me uh, to uh, define shapes without uh, uh, marking too much those shapes, you know? So it's very useful when you're trying to do like soft edging, you know, and things like that. So I'm going to start here. Oh, this one is not opaque enough. I'm going to try to use another one that's a little more opaque. Here we go. So what info can I share about the next Avatar movie? I, I mean, if I was to talk about the Avatar movie, there would probably be like some kind of secret police that would come here in my house and probably beat me up or something. Uh, legally, I'm not at liberty to share anything, aside from the fact that there's gonna be a lot of underwater sequences. Here we go. That's the one thing I can share. And, uh, and the story is awesome. Here we go. And it's when it comes to message about the stuff that we're talking about today, that's exactly what what this movie is about. It's really trying to convey a message about the beauty of nature, the the fragility of nature, our position, our place in nature, all those kind of messages which I really love. And to this day, I think uh, it is one of the most meaningful projects I've worked on. Although I'm working on another project right now that's extremely meaningful, but I cannot talk about it at all. Uh, and that, uh, it's meaningful in another way, you know. I'm really excited. I can't share it for now, but... That's, uh, that's kind of the extent of what I can share about Avatar. I'd be really in trouble if I was talking too much about it. And of course, you know, uh, uh, just to make that image a little more original, I will definitely add some sci-fi element to it, for sure. I promise, I swear. So I'm gonna do something a little cheeky. Uh, what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna use just a dot brush to create the pattern over the shark. 
Well, that's going to be fun, I think. Let's see how that works. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the same brush I've been using, you know, which is this one, the round brush. But instead of just, uh, I'm going to adjust the spacing of the brush. Really super cheap trick, guys. And uh, this is what it's going to create. So, oh, that's a very interesting question. Uh, so the, there's a question that, uh, what do you think is the key to make your sea creatures look like they're underwater in the painting? So the big, big thing to understand about underwater is that the light is affected uh, strongly by the overall, obviously, uh, blue tone uh, underwater. So all the colors that you think are real, like red, for example, uh, is going to be mixed with blue. So red is never going to look blue underwater, you know? So that's a big thing. So all your colors, you have to, to think of them when you create them as if they were modified by, by blue contact lenses or blue sunglasses, you know? That's what I would say. So you have to think all the time about that, you know? But the fact that whatever you do uh, is gonna be is going to be affected by that blue, that blue hue. And as soon as you think that way, you know, which is a different way of thinking of the usual painting, uh, you will see that happen, you know. You will see that work right away, you know. And also the thing that's very strong in the water is the fact that, uh, the, fact that uh, uh, the light is much, I mean, is all the time coming from the top because that's when the main source of light is, is the sun outside. And as it goes down, there's a gradient that happens. Uh, that's uh, obvious, you know. And what's important with those dots that I'm doing here, almost more important than their location is the the direction in which they, they circulate on the body and also the tone, which is much brighter. So how do you create an image looking into the water <coughs> from outside or looking outside from underwater? Oof, well, that's a, that's a more tricky image. So in order to succeed at stuff like that, and I mean, it's actually pretty tricky because the deformations that happen with when you're outside and you're looking in, you know, uh, uh, the refraction, it's called refraction of the water, is gonna affect tremendously uh, uh, the shape of things. And, and the thing to remember, I would say, is reflections. You know, of course, water affects, is affected by reflections big time, you know. Uh, so when you're outside looking at the water, the sky reflects onto that water. So when you're painting something that's underwater, it's going, it's going to be probably very affected by, by that sky reflection and all the reflections. And that's what makes an image exciting, you know? And that's the reason why in this image, now we're underwater, you know? And we are looking above the water, and that creates a reverse reflection of, of that whale, you know? And that creates something very interesting. That's what I would say. You know. It's very relaxing to do those dots, actually, to be honest. It's, uh, I was a little anxious because I've never done a, an Instagram uh, stream, you know? So uh, up until the last minute, I had no idea what I'm doing, which is why it's not uh, uh, horizontal. If anybody, knows, if anybody knows if we can do a horizontal, that'd be great. And maybe I can switch it, you know? If not, just put your phone on the on the table, you know, and uh, we'll go from there. <laughs> Sorry, guys. So now that I have these dots here, so they're all the same value right now, which of course is not correct, you know. 
what I can do very easily is something, it's a technique that I use a lot, is uh, I can basically, uh, uh, you see the little transparent square here, uh, you can lock the opacity here. So I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna lock it. And now I'm gonna take my airbrush and whatever I paint is gonna be in the realm of those dots and nowhere else. So it makes a big difference, so you'll see. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. So that allows me to, to really evaluate and put the emphasis on the dots that are looking up towards the light of the, of the, the, the sky, of course. You know, and whatever is facing down to be darker, like here on the tail, the back of the tail. Like this. Like this. I mean, overall, I'd say that uh, the dots I did are a little too bright, you know, so I'm going to change that. It was a good way for me to get into it, you know. Here they are very dark. Here they are very bright on the on that edge. Here they are kind of dark again. And the volume of that whale is starting to appear slowly. I'm gonna use a little bit of an overlay just to uh, make things a little faster. I, try to, I tend to avoid using overlay, but uh, here, because of the demo, I'm trying to go a little faster than usual so that you guys are not bored. I'm gonna use that. I love doing underwater images. It's really fun. Tons of fun. Those ridges are actually a little tricky to do, you know, because there's a uh, two different types of the lighting that happen exactly on the same area. You know, the hard edge from the top, soft edge, you know. But the challenge and the is what makes things happen, you know? That's what makes things fun, I guess. I need to brighten this area much more. And I'm getting a little more in the groove, you know, it's starting to take a little better shape. Honestly, I was not very confident at the beginning, but it's, it's getting better slowly. And then uh, once I have that kind of lined up, you know, I'm going to be able to start uh, adding the sci-fi part of it, sci-fi element of it. So where do I look for reference of ocean and wildlife? So uh, I have a friend, uh, he's an incredible uh, underwater photographer. I highly recommend uh, uh, looking at his work. His name is Damien Morick. I'm gonna send it to Christy so that she can. And uh, that guy is just an incredible, I've known him since I was a kid, you know, and we grew up by the sea together and stuff like that. 
so he's really into the same things that I'm into. Uh, and uh, his work is really truly uh, incredible. He does water underwater photography, and uh, he actually works in video game too, on video, in video game industry too. Uh, but uh, I strongly advise you to look at the guy's work. Uh, so yeah, underwater photography, and of course documentaries. I love documentaries. My favorite documentary is uh, uh, Oceans. You know, I think it was uh, by Disney, and I watch it once a month. It's uh, really one of my favorite uh, uh, documentary. It's really sad to hear that the the guys that filmed it, you know, passed away uh, on a, while filming uh, uh, in a helicopter accident. You know, uh, but uh, but I, I mean, so it's just sad that I cannot see any other documentaries by the same guys. You know. But uh, I highly recommend uh, watching this uh, documentary. Really incredible. But yeah, underwater photography. I mean, I grew up with the Cousteau generation, you know? So Jacques Cousteau, of course, was a huge inspiration to me as a kid. You know, a lot of people my age, you know, uh, I think feel the same way, you know? Uh, no, I don't. No, I, I am not a member of those organizations. I, I I don't even know actually. I would love to learn more about them. And that's the issue, you know, with uh, because uh, uh, because uh, I work so much, you know. Uh, I have a tendency to disappear kind of in my, uh, in my world. And uh, especially with what's going on with the COVID right now, I feel really limited in terms of being able to go and explore and uh, travel, you know? I, I love to travel and right now we're, everybody's kind of limited in that regard, you know? It's been very painful for me. Okay, so now let's have a little bit of fun. Yeah, I mean, yeah, someone is saying that uh, uh, talking about animal conservation and raising awareness, I struggle with conveying the urgency of taking action to protect nature and at the same time keep the message positive. I think it's really hard. I think it's really hard. And, uh, you know, a lot of people are like, uh, uh, may not like her or whatever, but I'm a big fan of uh, Greta Thunberg, you know. I think. Uh, because the, the fact that she, under the autism spectrum, you know, she doesn't have maybe the same polite filters that we have, you know, and the fact that she goes after people with a lot of honesty and a lot of anger, you know, I think it's necessary at some point, you know? Oh. Some people say that uh, the audio may be out, so I apologize if... I apologize if it's the case. Anyway. Okay. So I'm gonna readjust the exposure of that image. By adding a new layer that is darker. And then I'm gonna erase some of the areas. And that's going to help me readjust the exposure of the image as a whole.
And the great thing about the fact that I kept all my layers, that like I can go underneath, you know, and I can add uh, a little more atmosphere, you know, under that well so that it pops up a little more. And here, what I can do is add a little more of this. I'm going to blend the background a little bit so I recede kind of back a bit more. You know, I'm going to add some bubbles because I always say it's underwater. Uh, so is it legal, okay, to uh, to paint f based from a documentary? Uh, I mean, to to do what I'm doing right now, you know, which is more like fan art, you know, and things like that, it's okay, you know. Uh, when you start selling stuff, it's a little bit of a different story, you know. Uh, uh, when I do drawings for sale, you know, like I've done on during conventions, I've done drawing that I gave away actually, uh, uh, and when I do those, I do them from from imagination, you know. Uh, and uh, but when I do things that are more from uh, that are more uh, uh, like free, like uh, like I'm just having fun and stuff like that, uh, it's okay. I mean, anyway, whatever happens, I always try to add my own little thing to it, you know. Uh, I try not to be exactly like it, you know. You can modify it, you know, so that you're not necessarily in legal problem, in legal trouble, you know. But if you try selling it, it's a whole different ball game now. You're asking for trouble for sure, you know. Unless it's uh, different enough, you know. You just have to be careful and that kind of stuff. So once again, I'm going to raise the contrast on the creature a little more because I still feel it needs more contrast. Oops. So what kind of conventions uh, I sell images at? So uh, with a uh, with Chrissy, who's the producer of our uh, of our uh, non of our company, uh, we uh, we go to Comic Con, uh, so that's where I go. Sometimes I go to Comic Con. Uh, I would go to uh, we went to the uh, G Eugene Con as well in uh, Eugene, Oregon. Uh, that kind of stuff. So that's the kind of places where we would sell artwork, you know. So I'm gonna add a, this is shaping up okay. I'm gonna add some bubbles here and there.
So for color picking, uh, I don't necessarily need a ref uh, uh, because it's so much in the blue realm that it doesn't really create any issue to use your own colors. Uh, I mean, underwater painting is very limited to a certain to a certain gradient, you know. And once, and that's why I started with a with a background right right from the bat. You know, if you look here in my layers. I mean, I started with a gradient, you know, and that gradient has everything in terms of lighting that's going to be necessary in order to do the painting. And the fact that it's a more limited palette makes it much easier, you know, to do a painting underwater. I find it easier personally, you know. Okay. Okay, now it's time for the submarine. I went for that to add that submarine so I have some room, you know, I may uh, I may uh, make that frame bigger. So here we go, so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm gonna select and expand the under part of that painting. The reframing is always fun, I find, to do. And flip the image a bit. Okay. See how that feels. Feels right. Okay. Accentuate those ridges a little bit. There we go. Okay, time for the submarine. So for the submarine, I'm gonna use some brushes that are a little different. Let me put the brushes back over there. So you see what I'm doing. Uh, see what happens. Trying to find an interesting design, you know. Maybe more spacing. Oh, that's cool. Not sure where to place it yet. Should work here. I warp it maybe. Cool. I'm gonna do as if this submarine was behind, you know.
So the question is, when did I start doing vehicle design? Uh, <laughs> uh, so strangely enough, I mean, a lot of the guys that do vehicle design are very, uh, very kind of gearheads, you know? They love uh, cars and stuff like that. And I like cars, no, I'm not gonna lie, I like cars, you know? But what excites me more because of all everything that I talked about early on, what excites me way more than cars is sailboats, you know? Once again, I grew up sailing. That was really my passion ever since I was a kid. And I just drew a lot of sailboats. So, and I think because of that, I have a different type of uh, visual aesthetic than other artists that do vehicle work because my artwork is always more inspired by by the ocean than necessarily other artists that are more inspired by cars, you know. I find cars great, you know. I find boats way more interesting. That's my, that's my take, you know. That's my personal preference, of course, you know. I'm still not sure if I'm gonna make this guy in front or in the back, you know? Is he in front of it? Is he... Is he here? It's good because I can do an animation. Sorry guys. Had to have a little bit of fun. Sorry guys, I'm um, kind of focusing a little more on the on the design. There's another question. Uh, my favorite subject to draw from imagination is of course sailboats. <laughs> And uh, sharks. I mean, I didn't do, usually my favorite, I mean, my, my favorite animal is the white shark, of course. So usually I do a lot of white sharks, uh, but I thought this time I would change a little bit and do like a, another type of creature, you know, uh, a whale shark. Uh, but I would say that uh, a sailboat in general um, is like the ocean. Painting the ocean is something that I really love to do. One of my favorite movies of all time is uh, The Abyss, you know? All those uh, who know about it. Of course, you know? I love doing sailboats and airplanes the most. Here we go. That would be my... That's what I would say. And when it comes to creatures, sharks, no doubt. Definitely my favorite.
for the question is, uh, have you ever played Subnautica? No. Uh, so uh, I've never played Subnautica, and uh, I haven't played games in ages. The reason is that uh, when I started working in video games, I stopped playing video games. I think uh, I had so many, sc so much screen time during the day that I was getting really tired of this. What is it like to work with James Cameron? He's a really intense guy with such a strong, vivid vision. Does that make things easier or harder uh, uh, as a concept artist? I, I hope I won't get in trouble to for saying that, but I mean, James Cameron was the probably easiest director I worked with in terms of concept art. Uh, he, because he has such a clear vision, and he's, I mean, the guy is very, very smart, you know? And uh, you know, when I work with people that are smarter than me, I just, I just listened, you know? <laughs> and uh, so I would say that to me, it was an incredible experience to work with him. Incredible. The guy is very sweet, I mean, at least with me, you know. Uh, other people may have had different experiences, but for me, it was a very positive experience. So I would say that the guy is a very nice guy. Very, very professional. I mean, extremely professional and loves his job, obviously, you know. So I would only have positive things to say about him. You know, and, and uh, no, I like to do those images, you know, where the nature and technology are blending together. I think that's why I like sailing, is because sailing is a fairly technological thing, you know, uh, it's a lot of technique, a lot of things that break on the boat, that kind of things, and there's, I find it amazing that it allows us to get closer to these animals, you know. And uh, te when technology blends with with uh, nature, I think it's that's when humans are their best. If there is one line that that can be maybe uh, kind of my last final word for this presentation is that technology should be here to be closer to animals, not further away. You know, whether it's using a uh, whether it's using uh, uh, cameras, you no know, amazing cameras to film beautiful sceneries and documentaries, or whether it's using a sailboat in order to to discover animals, or whether it's like uh, using uh, a new type of uh, of uh, of a vehicle in order to go underwater and and discover more about nature. I, to me, that's where I think humans are their best. If that's the final sentence I can go out with, you know, with this presentation is, I love sci-fi, I love technology, I love nature, I love animals, I love underwater animals, and if there is a wish is that if we can live more together and experience this planet together, as opposed to uh, to to be I mean destroyers, you know, that's that would be my my message, I guess, you know. So here we go. These look, look more like some kind of drones, you know? That'd be cool if we could study animals using drones, you know? Maybe uh, you know, we can travel with them. Imagine that, if we had a camera and we have a camera that's attached to one of those drones and we can actually more live amongst those creatures, you know, help them maybe, or try to fend off hunters or something like that, you know? That'd be awesome. I'm adding a little bit of vignetting to the image. But I think it's kind of not kind of getting close to, to this, you know, to being done. Let me see if I can take this. Imagine that a flock of helpful drones as opposed to killing drones in the middle of the ocean to help other creatures, you know? That'd be something. 
Anyway, if I can leave with a message of hope. <laughs> I must sound very, very cheesy right now, but you know what? I don't care. I am cheesy. Anyway, well, I hope it was a somewhat of a helpful demonstration. Uh, I was a little nervous because I've never done that uh, uh, using a... Uh, using Instagram, so I hope I wasn't too nervous, you know, and uh, uh, follow us. Uh, we're going to have some more streaming, like the one I just did, uh, probably on YouTube, on our Instagram channel, on our YouTube channel as well. So hopefully you'll be able to join us there. And uh, I thank you very much for being here, guys. Uh, and uh, I hope to uh, see you guys again soon. And I'm going to stop the streaming. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everybody. How do I stop the streaming? I don't even know. And this is what you get when you're getting old. You just lose it completely with uh, technology.